All right, volatility most certainly within the BRD market, which is uh, up for the last three days, or at least starting, this is the three-day time frame. So starting today, yeah, 30%, but it was up about 100% at one point within this high, a high that comes to an area of major previous resistance. All bets, trades of the like is within each his own risk reward. Welcome to the Money Charts channel. And as we take a look at BRD next on the daily, we already see now this was down at the previous high and it's already given a lot of it back. Now back to this area where it came from in here. Major extension, of course, just of epic proportions. And when you have those big moves, to have this type of pullback is not a surprise. Okay, so where do we go from here? Well, let's take a look at more shorter term, uh, shorter term time frames. But before we do, just good to note that it's got, I want to see it hold this general area between like 2859 to 32 to see it to, for this move to be valid. I don't have any holdings on this, so I really don't really care too much for that purpose. But as far as this to be that of a real move, that's uh, what is a big hold. If you see weakness in this lower area, if it starts to falter, then that's a big bad sign having a move like this, that you'd have a very large break below this 1875 low. So then, let's now take a look at this on the uh, one-third day or the eight-hour. And that's just a phenomenal move from a whole bunch of nothing in here. Okay, triple hour. And it was a previous period that did it. Only two hours and 27 minutes left, so it was over half an hour ago. At, at least that this top but this top was like 5100 and this little nothing consolidation was 25 so there's your 100 percent right there that it was up and now it's lost about uh okay 18 1900 on that so we lost about 40 percent so far a good chance that uh this thing could even come down further and i don't know where it's going to go after that but it's a pretty phenomenal move, and it's retraced it quite a bit. We'll have to take more on this, take a look at this more in the short term to try to get more emphasis on it. So let's look next at the single hour. And it was the previous hour. It is 2:32 as I'm doing this, or 1,400 hours. So it was in the 1,300 hour time stamp. 37% up for that hour when it was all said and done. But again, near the top, it was close to 100%. 15 minute term and, and this is log scaling this this is just crazy you can see it doing nothing and now after you spark a move up 98 percent in one 15 minute period double then to have these follow throughs to lose 25 percent of its value in 15 minutes and then another 8.4 percent the next one and then a nothing move up 0.73 and then down 577 and so far, three minutes and 30 seconds into this one, it's already down 1.22%. Oftentimes, currencies like the yen and the euro can work all day to get 1.22% volatility, sometimes all week. Let's go to the four minute. And there you can see more complexity of this move. And the, the big, two big previous minutes. So let's finish it off on the one. And there we see it getting going. Was there anything to indicate that it was ready to go before all this got big? Because if we go even on this point in here, here you have a situation where the market goes up from 25 to 29. You get some higher volume in here. I mean, that has to usually be the case for just to actually even do that because the amount of buyers that it takes to fulfill all the sell orders. But this could easily be a top, and if it's not, the thing could each time go exploding higher. And even here, people are buying at these levels, and of course, what are they going to do with the positions and many minutes later? Some of them have already sold for decent losses. But you could be buying there, and next thing you know, it's 12000 next hour. Those are obviously possibilities when you get to this type of volatility. And if this correctionary phase succeeds on the short run, and it can start to get above some of these levels and you break this point, then who knows what the next uh, three, four, five days may look like. You could be, or even then for the next matter, three, four, five weeks. But a lot of times with these moves, they have ultimately failed on the short run as, they, as the bear market has been in place, of course. 
one of the top gainers on Bittrex, which is like two BTC volume right now, not much. In fact, there's only about a handful of coins with even 20 Bitcoin daily volume, and the highest right now is 74. But uh, this one, a little bit ago here, which when we look at this would be 15, about in the last day, because each minute you can see on the one minute time frame, you go 1418, then the next shift over is 1512. Well, what that means is that nobody made a trade for 54 minutes. And then after 1512, the next trade was 1623. That means it went over in an hour. And then 1623 to 1632. So definitely normally not a two Bitcoin market, but on this moment 213, we had a open at 2010. Uh, well, the price never really changed at all, but it was just a big order that was filled. And the volume that was being played in here would have represented that of uh, 27,000, if I times that by 2,000. That would be about uh, a little over a half a Bitcoin. And for two Bitcoin over the last 24 hours, there's 25% of its daily volume on that minute. Single hour chart, it's definitely not well. You can see the very low uh, vol volume and vol volume in it. Low market trade and its gain is still just getting back to its resistance from the start of the or support from the start of the month. And as far as the daily, I'm looking at this for the first time. And uh, yeah, this move in here, the volatility that it had, 2,700 up to 69. And then back down. So buying now, maybe this thing can go up to 38 or to 42 like that. And maybe not. That's totally uh, one of those wild card plays. But that's the thing. If you were to buy in here at this point, it would have worked out. Uh, but really, this is really about it for this coin. Another one I'm not holding. Just, just want to take a look to see what's going on there. Cosmos, or that of ticker symbol, symbol Adam, having good two days, but you can't say so much for the rest of its movements, as it had this resistance high of 8,200, now down to 21 and two-thirds, 2167. But within the two-day time frame, it was down to 1790 or so, and it's still just a small gain. Still from this uh, short term, we can see this little sending triangle after it got above the 18 average. Once it broke the resistance, it's had a clear, concise move so far. Not too sure if the move is over, but the move right now is in its fourth period. On the single hour, you can see more of that, uh, that situation because when it came up here and hit this level of resistance in here, second time hitting it with the pullback, third time having this little bit of... Uh, consolidation but each time supporting the previous uh, nice higher low as was the case here to this and this to this and then of course getting it above it the clear concise mode and it, the way that it's just been consolidating its move so far and this thing is still alive to have uh, to continue its move higher this now could be the top but you still don't know that until you have good, concise, clear reason for it, and you don't see that right now. On the 15, you can uh, just see in here how uh, it's been doing just really well within this uh, 18 for quite some time. It did have an attempt to break it out previous period, and it kind of failed because it went all the way up here and then back to where it came from, which which is fine. In fact, that's a, not an uncommon thing to do. When you break a key level because it resisted it several periods ago, pull back, came back to it, pull back, came back to it, stayed in that area for like three periods. And then after that third period, it uh, broke it convincingly. Now back to this area. So if we can support in this area and then you see it moving higher, you need the shorter term to convince yourself for that to be the case, then definitely live for a, a nice another leg higher of course from this last one at 21 and 65 and on the four minute well there's all these little hits in here one two three four and this was a very very fast move is this just a one-time buy well we'll take a look at the one next but since that play has came in we're now at one two three four. this is the fifth period going sideways halfway through the fifth one now and just holding and staying above this little area here if it can continue to hold and stay above well, basically the 18 average of lows 
if that can hold as a support mark, then that is uh, definitely a uh, productive sign moving forward. And it's already established this level of resistance at 2175 to 2176. Getting it above that, will that be a retest of this? So let's take a look uh, to see what happens. Because usually this would be a one minute deal. And so it went. But after that one minute deal came up, it came right back down to this 2161 and had a little bit of continuation rally above it, which is a good productive thing for six, seven, eight minutes. Since then, just staying sideways, uh, supporting this low for a second test now, because we can see where it came back to in here, this move higher. And uh, from this point moving forward, this move in here, it, if it can at least flatten up the band, it uh, has a long ways to go to really do more than that. Going up to about 24 and a quarter would flatten out the band as well attempting to revert the trend and uh, that'd be a, like you're attempting to rever to attempt to revert it if you know you're attempting to attempt the revert if you know what I mean I said it twice because I don't know if it goes up to this level if it goes up to 2413 if it's going to do go in that process if I see it well above it like 26 26 uh, 4 26 40 well now it just tr went to the action to attempt to revert and uh, change the trend. And in here, I know this. there's no pre previous data, but in here, oh, okay, you're trying to attempt to revert it, but you failed it because obviously the 18 fell, but more importantly, the 61.8% Fibonacci, just holding a key low from this point, did fail. And then when you've seen it just consolidating amongst this low, not a surprise that it continued to go down. And it's been, of course, a wild move, but markets go up, markets go down. And if this coin is either that of a good coin, if that's the case, then you know it's going to have good moves later. Or if it's not a good coin and it just happens to have a bear market rally, those are the two things that can spark this to go uh, higher. Of course, whether it happens now or later, this thing go down to maybe 400 and then have a rally up to 2,000 to 3,000. Or maybe this bottoms now and it rallies up to five, seven. And this thing could bottom now and rally north of this high. Because if it's going to have a good move, uh, okay, meh, if it goes up to like 3,000, 4,000. Pretty good if you could make a 61.8% level, which would be like 6,500 or 6,000 even. Really good if you could match previous high at 9,000. But if you talk about breaking that, and markets have done that in the past, that means you go into like 15, 20, 30, 40,000, which at this stage would be a, a 20, 30x gain. Well, 20x gain to get to over 40 then that's remarkable. And I've seen 20x gains before. Again, I'm not saying it's going to happen with this coin, but I am saying that it's done. It's worked out in the past where when these things go wild, they go wild. But you could have been saying, and I pretty much was at some point, it's got to happen back here and here and here. And well, it hasn't yet. And it's going to be that way, of course, until it, it doesn't. We're just going to, because uh, anytime this thing goes, you can try to catch it live, try to get whatever indicators to help you along the way. And if they can, that's great. But when these things go, they can go so fast that you're going to be forced to be fast within your exercises and how you do things if you're trying to stay up in tempo with the markets when they go at a, a, a sprint speed. Litecoin's another one that's been getting its ass kicked in here. As it was up to 17 handle, close to 18, and then it went down almost to the 6. So it almost lost a 3x move, and it's still may. As we've only had just a small meh, 2% update yesterday, and right now up 5.14% close to the 18 average of highs. But amongst the triple hour, we had a failed breakout attempt here. We didn't support the 18, had the breakdown below it in here, and then a significant leg lower. Now within this attempt, much better attempt than this so far, at least anyway. Guy getting above the short term resistance of uh, 006 and all threes. And uh, obviously a significant move. All, don't be, that's expected to happen. When you break significant support and resistance to have key moves, I would expect a fast move at least up to uh, between the 44 handle up to about 65. And, and well, it's even done better than that so far. So it's managed to pierce above 
this level of resistance. Like always, when I see a move like this, holding a higher low is big. This area here would work out near about a 61.8% retracement, at least a pierce below 61.8. So that's the must hold area. And if not, like just like this in here, oh, the must hold area would have been around uh, in here. Well, it didn't hold it. And because it didn't hold it, then you had the big leg lower. On the single hour, it got going at 7 o'clock with a 2.5% almost up move. A couple hours later, or three hours later, at 10 o'clock, 2 and uh, 4, uh, four ninths. And then following that up with a 0.23 and a 0.8 over the next two single hour sessions. And just stay hanging in there amongst this higher area, if you want to call it a higher area, but for short term purposes, of course. I think would be another way of putting it, but back to this double hit area of previous resistance, and as mentioned, some sort of higher low in here would be the ultimate must uh, hold. This thing is overextended in here, so you can see that even before this, like uh, the next key area of anything that also where coincides right now with the 18, is in with the uh, 64. And another way of looking at the 18, if we have a move to it now, it's more common to have a big red candle move here at this time because of the high volatility. It's, and that's why it's, if I look at it that sense, okay, that could work well. And if it takes a few times, and well, the chances of that big of a move doesn't come as strong as the markets settle in. But also that means that if, say, two, three periods go by, the 18 average of highs would be up to like 65. I'd be looking for the lows even, whatever. But I'd be looking uh, for support always at this 18 band. And uh, yeah, it's, an, it's a volatile environment and that's um, what it is. And the risk reward situations, or if you want to profit from volatility, it's the market. Uh, in there for you to finish this off, let's take a look at Bitcoin and its dominance. And Bitcoin on the single hour term time frame after this decline in here. Did manage to have this breakout higher at 11 o'clock and now trying to correct its uh, small leg higher within it. 18 starting to rise, already supporting it on the lift off in here. Now having uh, entering its uh, correctionary move now. Whereas Bitcoin dominance on the single hour time frame starting here at about 7 o'clock is... Uh, starting to take a turn down, at least on the single hour. This is the worst it has endured. Really, even I don't even know if this even counts, but this was significant levels grinding the 18 lows. This is back to August 27th, 27th, which isn't that long ago. But let's take a look at how this looks on other time frames. On the triple eight triple eight on the eight hour the uh, one third day okay well this is the first time it's been below it since in here it's the first time it's broken below it well being nicely above it i guess you could say here 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 whichever but at least after having a good run above it this is a good run you can say similar to this kind of stuff in here so another attempt on the short term here to try to revert the trend. It established this level of support here, August the 14th, it never retested it. On this little move in here, it's established a level of support on July the 17th. It would retest it and resist it on the 24th, thus establishing a level of support barely below it, never breaking that level out. Then it broke down below here to uh, 62, never even coming close to testing it. And that's it so far during this uh, run since April 1st. Just barely breaking below it. See how it goes from this point here. And it's a statement that it's attempting, like it did all those times before to attempt to revert the trend. On the daily, it still hasn't even reached the 18 highs yet. And every single time, it has tested it from the April lows. It has succeeded. It managed to establish the support again. Success, we can see 18 lows almost support. Lift off from the 18 highs here. Falling below the 18 lows, but yet not breaking that established support, breaking out. Supporting the 18 lows on three different occasions before this move here. And now, of course, entering it again. It's... Uh, going to be one of those oh matter of whens before it breaks down and until it is 
well, then it's going to occasionally, every now and again, break resistance and make new highs. And, well, so far, it's done it once, twice, three, and four times since this high in here. All right, thank you for tuning in. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.